Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Santa Clara in Santa Clara. I'm here with Quentin Clark from Microsoft. Quentin, how you doing? Great. Nice to see you again, Mike. Nice to see you as well. So you gave a talk this morning and about uh, making data work for everyone. Mm -hmm. Can we unpack the three terms data, work, and everyone um, and, and describe what you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's just start. Let's just start at the beginning. The let's just start with the data, right? The the data is a combination both of the conversation we're having around Hadoop, right? And you know, the Hadoop world, we keep we keep moving. That it's moving really fast, right? What's in Hadoop two? What's in Hadoop two? We just this morning actually um, put support for Hadoop two two into preview and HD inside our Azure. And service. that was one of your announcements. That was one of the announcements yeah. this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that standard way of processing a much more diverse set of data is really important to it. But the other thing that's really important about data is uh, it's not just the data that's under your control that you've created, whether it's from telemetry or IoT or even transactional you know, line of business systems. It's also data that comes from around the world, right? It's, it's, the, it's the shipping company data that matters to the bank that does loans to retail, as an example. Or it's the, the data from the social feeds that matter to the hotel to personalize your experience when you check in, right? So it really is about kind of the data that's really out there, not just the data that's under your control. Now, of course, the data under your control and the advent of Hadoop is an important capability to make sense of all of this. Um, but it really is a, a much broader thing than that. Um, the making it work, the working yeah. part of it. Yeah. Um, I told us a little on stage, you know, when I, when I was put in a job a number of years ago on the core relational database, it, it, I was very intentionally um, spoken to about the responsibility because it runs people's businesses, right? You know, database goes down, has a problem, someone's business stops working, right? And, you know, I remember we were doing a conversion um, from one of our competitive products over to SQL Server for an SAP system. The shipping, actually a different shipping company. And the guy on the phone talking to me, we were talking about making sure we get the right support from him. He's like, look, if it goes down, like, our truck stopped moving within half a day. Oh, okay, like, made the impression. We're trying to bring that to all the Hadoop work as well, right? So the, everything from all the data sources and understanding where they are and understanding the correctness of them and feeding them up in these analytic systems and bridging that off to people looking at things or business process, all has to be ruggedized and, and be machinery, right, that businesses can rely on. So that part's really important as well, right? And, and you know, that's one of the reasons we've been contributing thousands of hours of Hadoop work and so involved. Um, and then the, the for everyone, you know, last fall we said for a billion people, right? right. We said making, right. you know, bring big data, the value of big data for a billion people. And as, uh, you know, we said that last fall and didn't talk too much about what we really meant by who, this time we tried talking a little bit about what, who are we talking about exactly? So there aren't going to be, a, you know, a billion people is a significant percentage of the population of the whole planet, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not all going to be data scientists or, you know, analytics developers. We're really talking about the people at their desks trying to become smarter about something in their world, right? And I gave, I gave some examples, whether it's the, um, the farmers trying to maximize dairy production from their herd, or whether it's the um, city planner at Barcelona that's trying to make sure that the customer sat with their bicycle program is as high as it can possibly be. They're not data scientists, per se. They, they may even have some somewhere in the organization, but them at that moment, how can they pull together the right information and understand it in a way that they can make sense of it. And it really takes a, a generational change in the experiences, right? And um, the other big piece of news we had this morning, which really happened on Monday, was the general availability of uh, of, um, of the, the BI work we do, Power BI for Office 365, right? Which is our BI tooling that's all cloud projected. So you can just log in and interact with data models in HTML5, and you can get it on you know, devices. and you know, changing the, immers the immersiveness, if you will, of the experiences. And then the other big piece of that, um, of course, is the work we've done with a feature we call Q&A, which is a natural language interface. And literally, even my own job, you know, looking at engineering data, looking at live site data for all the services we run, looking at my business, my core business results, I stand at these gigantic boards we call PPI boards, which are these um, touchscreen 60-inch boards, and we interact with data standing there in real time as opposed to sitting down with printed sheets, you know what I mean? And yeah. having questions and finance goes off or someone goes off and they come back a week later. We sit there and we drill and of course they understand their, their, their data and they have these, you know, um, these power view views, that, you know, visualizations of the data. Then we get off the rails, we jump into power Q&A, 
and we start asking questions, we're able to drill the data and get answers and move the business or move our engineering work or move our live site understanding at the speed of, of the people, not just of the supporting systems. So is this tool suite you're talking about going to be easier for, let's say, someone who works in Excel? Because I think right now that Excel is probably the most dominant uh, analytical tool yeah. out there, I mean, yeah. it, it by far. Yeah, one of my one of my direct reports, Kamal, he, he's fond of saying, anyone that does anything around the BI space, the first features they implement are copy, paste, and export to Excel. Yeah. Right, because Excel lets people cover some gaps and then import things to build charts and whatever else. Yeah, the, the Ben Excel, I mean, we think there are about a billion people that know on the planet that know how to use Excel, right? And so by, by, by betting on giving people those tools and that power in Excel, it changes the accessibility of the technology, right? And it changes the approachability of being successful, right? And, uh, and one of the stories I told this morning was, I was sitting with my kids, we are talking about the World Cup and Olympics and stuff, and I was able to just use Excel, go to Power Query, which lets us search cor corporate catalog data, stuff that uh, your business yeah. is managing, but also public data. So we actually have a team that curates public data sources and refines them and ensures that they show up well. So I was able to search country population, boom, she came back. Uh, con you know, country by continent, boom, a different sheet came back that had all the countries by continent. Bring them together, produce a visualization, hand over my kids, and they're in there, clicking in and understanding the data way differently than if it's just some big table, right? Yep, yep. And so that, that's what kind of we mean by those changing experiences. And by doing things in the online presence of Office, Office 365, we not only have you know, that friction-free, get going really quick, right? You know, use the tools that are just integrated into web browsers, but we also have this incredible reach. And so many of our commercial customers now are on Office 365, right? So we, the audience is there. So one thing I've been hearing more about at this conference that it just seems like it's cropped up is machine to machine, machine yeah. data, yeah. and internet of things, industrial internet, industri internet of everything, whatever we want to call yeah. it, the machine oriented data. How is your, your tools and your platform going to be able to handle that sort of thing? Yeah, it's interesting that even the case studies we used this morning, um, we didn't plant this way, but they all happen to be Internet of Things scenarios. Right, the cow, yeah, at the, the, at the cows, end of them, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the, the cows. Cow sourcing, yeah, yeah, the cows, cow crowdsourcing, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so there, there are these devices that are on the cows that are then streaming data up into Azure, into Azure storage, where we then can do processing from using things like HD Insider, Hadoop offering in Azure. Or we have, um, you know, see Barcelona, it's actually a mix of, of traditional structured records and you know, things that are, that are in, in, in databases in Azure, in Azure DB, Azure SQL database, as well as things that are in streaming data that are then processed with Hadoop. Um, and then the other scenario we, we talked about was uh, the cybercrime center yep. at Microsoft, where yep. you know, we partnered with law enforcement to bat down botnets and, and crime that's happening on the internet. And that is also an Internet of Things. I mean, the, the devices out in the world that are being infected because of things that are implanted inside websites and that kind of stuff, right? They're, they're things, right? I mean, in this IoT scenario, I mean, you know, I, I guess you have at least two on your body right oh, now, yeah, yeah. right? If, do. if you don't have a, a third, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, you know, they took all my stuff away as I sat down, so I probably still have all of my phone on me, but we as humans are carrying so much, uh, so many devices with us. So that's another example, right? All that telemetry, you know, you know, for, a, for just for an application developer and how their apps are being used, the devices and the experiences end up mattering a lot. And so that whole IoT thing, the pattern of data coming in, being brought together, but being brought together in ways that are very flexible, right? I mean, you don't always know what you're going to do with it later. Right. So you have to, you have to embrace that you're going to have all the stuff, you got to keep it, and you got to be very flexible how you want to be able to process it. Excellent. So, Quentin, I might have asked you this before, but I, I like to still check in with where you are personally, not from a Microsoft perspective, yeah. but if data could solve any problem in the world, any problem that you see out there, what would you sick data on to solve? Yeah, it's interesting, because the, um, the other close association Microsoft has, of course, is with, with Bill Gates and the, the, the yeah, Melinda Bill Gates Foundation. Edition, and yep. um, you know, as, as we get to learn about things that they do, you realize that a, a, a big part of solving some of the world's most pressing human yeah. needs problems turn out to be big data challenges, yeah. right? You know, I mean, certain advancements have been made in the map of the human genome, and there actually there's some discussion about some of this stuff this morning at some of the other keynotes at Strata, which is great to see. I, I actually believe that empowering more and more scientists with better tools and better capability and better information is going to, cause another quantum leap 
in how we're able to, to get after the things that are affecting humanity in a big way. And you know, every time we work with um, those kinds of programs, we work with actually a lot of um, academic institutions that are doing that kind of research. Um, we have programs to help them you know, bootstrap and get started and make sure they're successful. But they're able, to, they're able to tap into the power of the cloud, right? They get all this compute that's, you know, they don't have some yeah. guy in a data center racking machines yeah. and all this, right? They're able to just tap into that power. The, the, the lack of any limit on the amount of data they can have is an important piece of it as well. And so the sort of limitless data and, and infinite processing capability and infinite flexibility and, and scale and power is going to lead to these next generations of breakthroughs. And so you know, as a participant in the industry, it's one of the things I'm proud of when I see. Yeah, excellent. Quentin, we look forward to seeing you, you folks again. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Mike. Thanks. Take care.